Undoubtedly, you've heard of the revolutionary new weight loss drugs that are out there. And actually, I did a podcast on this about a month or so ago, talking about the GLP-1 classification of drugs, the, the Wygovi, the Ozempics, the Trizepatide. And I spoke about that podcast. I dove a little bit into that. And the fact that it's in the news, well, it's kind of almost hard to hide from it. In fact, there was an uh, AP article that came out this past week about how popular they're becoming. But something that doesn't change, something that isn't revolutionary, isn't new, and it comes along with using this medication and what the weight loss that people are trying to achieve, and that is, how do I keep it off? I mean, that's the age-old question about any weight loss program. How do I keep it off? Well, that's a little more complex challenge. Losing the weight is one thing, but keeping it off is something completely different. But I can simplify it for you with one word, B3. What am I talking about? Well, that's what we're talking about today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Garrett Williamson. I'm president of Personal Edge Fitness and the host of the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast dedicated to dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness. Now, if you're a fan of the podcast, you'll notice that I don't always give the tagline. And when I'm introducing the podcast, talking about dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness. I thought it's significant today because this is something that's come out that's revolutionary. It's new. Everybody's excited about it. It's the new in thing, if you don't mind. But as with everything dealing with health, fitness, and weight loss, it comes with some myths associated with it and some questions still left unanswered. Well, actually, I'm going to answer them for you today. Before we get into it, I want to talk to you about how to get in touch with us. If you have any questions about this podcast or any others or any questions dealing with dispelling the list of health, fitness, and wellness, you can contact me at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T at personalagefitness.com. Personalagefitness.com is another way you can reach us. That's, of course, our website. And you can reach out to us on Facebook at Personal Edge Fitness. Get me on Instagram if you want at Personal Edge Fitness. You can also contact me through X at Team PE. I'd be glad to handle any of your questions or, you know, help you out with if you're going through this weight loss journey on one of these new drugs. The AP article that I spoke about in the introduction came out just this past week. And it's funny, I, I saw it the day it came out and I had immediately... After that, I had two or three people email it to me, which I really appreciated. They wanted my thoughts on it and what have you. And, and basically, the article talks about the weight loss drugs being very prevalent, people really getting into this, and even quotes that experts say that they predict that 24 million people or 7% of the U.S. population will be using the GLPT-1 drugs by 2035. That came from Morgan Stanley Research Analyst. Actually, I came up with that. And of course, they're you know, looking at investment and people are investing in these drug companies because they want to know how many people are going to be using this and whether or not you should invest in it. And so that's what they came out. And I'm not surprised by that number, that 24 million people are 7% of the U.S. population. I actually argue that it, that it would be more than that. I argue that it'll be more than that because of the amount of obesity that we have in the United States. The claim is that 62% of the population they say is obese, I argue it's a higher number because they've used the wrong guesstimation, I can't call it a measurement, of BMI to guesstimate obesity. And BMI is a made-up number. You've heard me talk about it. I've got a podcast on it. It was, came from the 1700s of a gentleman by the name of Adolfo Quitelet. Or Quitelet I, don't, I don't speak French, so pardon me if I'm getting that pronunciation wrong. He was a mathematician and a statistician, and he wanted some kind of objective way to kind of measure, you know, how fit am I? So he made up this scale, and it's basically based on like a height weight scale. Has no real science behind it whatsoever, and misdiagnosed people on a daily basis. I, I, I do not allow my staff to use it. Anybody in the health profession that's using it better research it because you are mismeasuring people, especially people that are thin and have sarcopenic obesity. It is disastrous. It is disastrous to the baby boomer generation. So, so if they were measured correctly, they would find out a lot of these skinny people. They think, oh, they're BMI is wonderful and they're on a blood pressure medication or cholesterol medication because of genetics. In other words, the we give up. We just think it's something else. No, if you measure their body fat, you'll find out that they're actually technically, technically, not guess, guessing about it, technically 
obese, which is 26% body fat or more for a male or 30% body fat or more for a female. And that is, that is obese. Anyway, I'll, I'll get off my soapbox on that. I'll be on that all day. So I argue that the number is higher than 62%. And that, that because of that, there will be it, probably more than 7% of the population on this drug. And I have to tell you that anything that combats obesity, I'm, I'm a huge fan of. If you're a fan of the podcast, you've probably heard one of my earlier podcasts, and pardon me for the earlier ones, they went a little too long, and I spoke way too fast, but I talked about the number one killer. There's a list of top 10 killers in the world, and the number one right now is heart disease. They say, they say, I don't say, and it's not, I'll, I'll prove it to you, it's not the number one killer, but they say the number one killer is heart disease, number two killer is cancer, and then it goes to, I think, accidents, or and goes on down from there, lung function problems, kidney problems, what have you. I argue that that is not the number one killer, and the reason being is that all of these killers, except for accidents, don't just, you don't catch it. You don't catch heart disease. You don't, one day I don't have heart disease, next day I've got heart disease. And it's not like catching a cold. It's not like I walk by somebody, they breathed on me, I caught COVID. That's not what cancer is. That's not what heart disease is, not what lung disease is. These are diagnoses, but what causes them are a series of different things, and they're called risk factors. And every physician knows this, every, every medical scientist knows this, that we're looking at risk factors. So for, for instance, the MR FIT study in 1970, which was set out to try to prove the lipid hypothesis, which you've heard me talk about, the idea that high cholesterol causes heart disease, which has never been proven. The MR FIT study was dedicated to, to researching that particular topic, and it didn't prove it. Like all the studies trying to prove the lipid hypothesis is, is whether or not it's true. It's no, there's never been a study that's proved it's true. But that study did find that smoking was directly related to heart disease. Well, smoking is a risk factor of heart disease. So that's, excuse me for that long diatribe, but that's what a risk factor is. Smoking is a risk factor for heart disease, a risk factor for cancer, it's a risk factor for um, lung disease. Dementia is one of those up there also, and believe it or not, lack of water, not drinking enough water is a risk factor for dementia. So that's what a risk factor is. So the reason I say that heart disease is not the number one killer, I say it's obesity. Why do I say it's obesity? Simple. Obesity happens to be the number one risk factor for seven of the top 10 killers. It's number four for cancer. It happens to be number two for Alzheimer's, for dementia. And so I'm a big fan of anything, anything that's going to get our obesity under control. Big fan of that. But as I said in the introduction, the, the question becomes, and, and actually it's the same question we've always had about any diet program. You know, first thing, will I lose the weight? Everybody gets excited about losing the weight. No, no, that's great. That's fantastic. I, 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 but I caution everybody at the beginning of that. While you're in this temporary program, you have changed something. You've changed your food. You've changed your exercise. You may be in a temporary situation because it doesn't become lifestyle. It doesn't become a habit until 21 days. It doesn't become a lifestyle until 90 days. And then you've got to continue the lifestyle. So the question always is, well, how do you keep it off? And now the question with these particular drugs is, once I get off the drug, how do I maintain the weight loss? Now, this article listed a gentleman, 58-year-old Manhattan resident, who went on the drug, and he was on Wigovi, and he lost 30 pounds, which is, you know, fantastic. Losing 30 pounds, started eating healthier food and exercising, and he was using, this is, this is key, along with taking the drug, he was using the habits behind many commercial diet plans and decades of conventional wisdom on sustainable weight loss. Now, that's key. That's really key here. Because you think, oh, okay, we're doing everything great. He's using the, the good things we've heard about that. All right, but the problem is, is our conventional thinking about weight loss is completely wrong. <laughs> and, and it doesn't solve the problem. And I'll tell you what I mean in just a second. But the gentleman was quoted, though. And this is what I'm hearing. We're having people come in that are, that are clients coming in that are coming to work out with us because they're on the drug and they want to get off of it. So they know they need to make some changes. They really don't know how to get there. And so they're coming to us for that. And I see the same idea coming from each one of these individuals. His quote was, quote, I don't see how you can maintain the weight without medication. Obviously, it's all about, quote unquote, self-control. But I think it's less of a struggle to really maintain healthy eating when you have that assistance. Of course, I understand that. But it can be, the weight loss can be maintained. The problem is, in every weight loss program, and the majority of weight loss and diet programs out there, all they're doing is attacking a symptom. They're not attacking the problem. The only thing weight loss is that when, you, when you're actually losing the weight is you're attacking the symptom. You're not attacking the problem. And that, that's where all of them fail. So simply, what's the problem? 
That's well, actually very easy. Usually, when you're talking about diet, you go into that good food, bad food argument. If I just eat the good food, I'll lose weight, I'll be great, and it's self-control, and I just got to make myself do it, and that's how I'm going to be healthy, and I should hate myself if I don't. You don't say that last part, but it's what we think. You've heard me several times use the example of four ladies sitting around the table, and you, you know that my mantra is the actual fact, the truth. There is no such thing as bad food. But when you have four ladies that are sitting around the lunch table and having lunch, one of them orders a salad with chicken, dressing, and what have you. The second one orders the salad, and they'll have chicken, but they want no dressing on it. The third one orders a salad, and they want no chicken on it, whatever, and no croutons, or whatever. And the last one orders a hamburger. In that scenario, think through it. Who gets to wear the princess crown? And who gets to wear the dunce cap? Who gets talked about at the table? Who gets talked about behind their back because of what they ate? Well, it's the person that ate the burger. You know, can't believe they had that. That, that I, I used that example for years, and then I actually had it happen. I had a group of ladies that were, three of them were clients of ours, and all three of those clients came back and told me these exact same things, and I'm just shaking my head. Well, the person that probably had the healthiest meal there, quote-unquote healthy, was the person who had the burger. Because there's no such thing as bad food. So we beat ourselves up going, got to eat the good food, got to eat the good food, not eating bad food. But that is attacking a symptom. It is changing food, not changing lifestyle. Oh, Garrett's going to talk about, oh, I just got to change my lifestyle. Yeah, I'll just start working out stuff. Yeah, that's part of it. Well, let me tell you what the drugs are. The drugs are basically a massive appetite suppressant. That's what they are. They make it where you don't really want to eat. And so it's an appetite suppressant, so therefore you're not going to eat. Therefore you're not going to, you're actually going to lose your weight. Wait, your body is going to start cannibalizing what you have, not just fat. First thing it's going to go after is muscle. But it's going to start cannibalizing what you have instead of burning the energy that you're putting in, which is food or excess food. And it's going to keep you also from putting more energy than you need, eating too much food where it's building more fat. So it's going to stop you from building the fat, and it's actually going to be taking in so much less that you're going to start burning the weight. And that could be muscle. It can be bones. It could be affecting your organs. And fat. It's going to start burning all of that. Now, there's a way to make it burn just fat and what have you. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I told you at the beginning of this, I'm a fan of it. I am. I'm a fan of a, of a big appetite suppressant. What it doesn't do, though, and what I'm going to change the food that I eat, you, you're still not doing. You're attacking symptoms, but you're not attacking the problem. It's easy enough to say, I'm just going to grab myself by the back of the head, self-control, and stop making myself overeat. What would be better? What would be better is to attack why you overeat. That's the key. That's the key to success. You want to know the simple answer? The simple answer to having long-term weight loss or weight control, deal with the problem, attack, and solve the problem of why do you overeat? And that's where the challenge is. And there's some steps to it. Yeah, there's a process to go through. But the why of why we overeat, I'm going to tell you right now what it is. It, and it's the same for everybody. Anybody tells you this is, that's not why I overeat, they're lying to you. If a medical professional of some sort tells you that's not why you overeat, they're lying to you. The only I, I did think of a caveat to that. The only caveat to that is that somebody that goes to a hot dog eating competition, the reason they're overeating is they're trying to win the competition. I don't really think we need to go down that road, though, because there's only one reason why we overeat, everybody, all of us. There's one reason and one reason only why we overeat. It's called cravings. That is the only reason we overeat, and the cravings are in the brain they're not in the body period that is why we overeat and as you've heard me tell you before there's only two reasons why we crave 40 percent of the reason why we crave is lack of water don't drink enough water over over 70 percent of adults don't drink enough water i'll argue the numbers higher than that because uh most if you ask and whenever i give a talk on this i gave one just two weeks ago to 70 people in the room and asked them how much water are you supposed to drink i couldn't get anywhere near the amount that is recommended by the National Institute of Health, the American Heart Association, American Medical Association, American Dietary Association, Harvard Medical, Stanford Medical, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic. I can keep going. 100 ounces a day. That's the first reason. The second reason, and it's larger, and this is even if you drank enough water, this 60% of the reason why we crave can actually still make you overeat. And that's stress. That's it. There is no other reason. We crave because of stress or lack of water. That is it. And unless you address why you crave, you will not have success. I've had people in my office say, oh, no, I didn't do that. I did. I, I lost the weight and I kept it off for so many years. Why do you have it back now? Because you never addressed the problem. 
And believe it or not, again, I said again, I said at the beginning of this, with the GLPT one dash one class drugs, I'm a fan of it. I'm a fan of an appetite suppressant. But we are in it here. We, we, the average tenure of a client at personalized fitness is six and a half years, not two week weight loss, not one month weight loss. I want to see you successful forever. And the way to do that is through B3. B3 is a new program that we're launching here at Personalized Fitness. Let me tell you about it. Now, let me tell you why it's different than a way that in the article they're saying that some fitness centers are getting involved with this. There's some diet companies that are getting involved with this. And they're basically adding the drug to their usual program, which typically shows temporary success, not long-term success, not long-term success like we see in our Catalyst program. So what does B3 do? Well, B3, we actually have. We have a physician on staff actually meets with you. Yes, if, if you qualify, you will be prescribed the, the drug. And actually, the one we use is a compound. It has a few other things, a B12 or something else that it has in it to counteract some of the effects that people have felt from taking the particular drug. But more importantly, in fact, it's so important, we won't have you in this program unless you do the entire program. If you don't do this other part, with all due respect, I'm not going to have you drop a lot of weight on a drug and then take a picture with you for our promotional information saying, look what we did. No. What I want to take a picture of is I'm going to take a picture of you months later, well after you're off the drug. And the whole program is set up to use these drugs as they were intended, temporary, help you get to success. But without the rest of that program, you're never going to reach that success. This program, besides, of course, fitness involved in it, but the other thing it does, it is paired with our very successful Catalyst program. In this program, what do we address? We address cravings. Why do you crave? What are you craving? How do we control the cravings? How do we mitigate that stress? How do we solve the water problem? And once we are off the drug, all right, now, how are we going to live? We deal with that in the program, not just, okay, do these things from now on, see you later. No, in this program, it is step by step. You're working with us in a class type situation. We're actually dealing with, we're going to take you through each step of this. We'll show you why there's no such thing as bad food. We'll show you how to completely eliminate your cravings and then keep them under control. You've heard the phrase, I'm sure, it's your relationship with food. Well, you never really know what that means. It's true. It is your relationship with food, but using food to medicate your stress, using food to medicate your lack of water, addressing the why of how, why you do that. Why, why do you do that? That is what our program does. We're actually launching this program this coming week. We're going to be running some, um, some information about it on, on social media, but we're already taking clients. So if you're interested in going on that appetite suppressant drug and you're interested in making that kind of change, but if you happen to be one of those weird people out there <laughs> that aren't just trying to drop a weight for a few weeks or a month, or as we've seen many people that have gone on this drug, they want to get off of it but they're afraid to because they don't want the weight to come back because they've heard horror stories of people getting on the drug and then, and then getting off of it and gaining not only the weight back, but some people gaining even more. We know why that is. We know exactly why that is. We address that. But they're terrified they're going to have to be taking this drug all their life. It was meant to be done for a short amount of time to help you get it under control. And if you pair it with the right program, you can make a change for life. And that's what B3 does. If you're interested in that, I'd love to have you give us a call, even if you just want to talk about it. As I tell, it's funny, I, I had six, six uh, new clients sign up this week. I've started telling people in the consult, even when they think about setting up a consult, listen, I don't mean to be braggadocious. We're the top personal training facility in the Southeast. We're running right around 400 sessions a week. These, these numbers are unheard of in this industry. I would love to have everybody train with us, but I don't have to have you train with us. But what you will get out of just the consult, just come and sit down and talk to us. Give me a call. What you will get out of that, I promise you, will benefit you, even whether you do something with us or not. But I'd like to help you get to where you want to go. I'd like to help you have long-term actual success, a real lifestyle change by addressing the problem. Please give us a call at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. PersonalizedFitness.com, of course, our website. We'll have a web page talking about the B3 program. It's not up yet, but we'll have one coming out pretty soon. We have a lot of people that want to get started on this, so we're going ahead and launch the program. So that's not on our website yet, but it will be. But you can reach out to us on our Facebook page. You're going to see uh, we're going to be running some information about the B3 program on our Facebook page. So keep an eye out for those. That's Personal Edge Fitness is the Facebook page. Hit me up on X at 
Team PE if you're so inclined. So, and I think I gave my email, but Garrett at personaledgefitness.com, I'd love to hear from you. You've heard me say this before on the podcast. I am a fan of modern medical science. Too many people in my field, you know, I hate every drug company. Whoa, you, are you kidding? The osteoporosis drugs alone saved a lot of lives. I'm a fan of modern medicine. But understanding the follow through, not always having to take the drug, really making that lifestyle change. Well, that's what helps you reach your true level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at personaledgefitness.com.